Welcome back. This is the last video for the Sloan Digital Sky Survey Hubble Diagram uh, project. Uh, this last part is called the Hubble Diagram. It's where we take the distance data and the redshift velocity data and make a graph out of it. So um, the idea that the universe was once small and expanding apart, I love this animation. It's an incredibly simplified version of how our universe evolved. All Everything moves apart from everything else. Um, we are putting together something that is modeled in this way. That the relationship between redshift and distance, or speed, that's speed of light times z, um, and uh, distance is related through this special number that we call h naught, the Hubble constant, a constant of proportionality that relates how fast an object is moving away from us to how far it is, and that's really characterizing how fast the universe is stretching out, how fast it's expanding. So we have this nice linear relationship that we're expecting. That's the model we're working in. We're going to see if the galaxies that we have um, match up with that model. Um, exercise 18 is an interesting um, dimensional analysis piece. So neglecting other elements of the cosmological model, the inverse of the Hubble constant, 1 over h naught, tells us the time since the Big Bang. So using a Hubble constant of h naught is 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec, can we turn this into um, an age of the universe that, that makes sense? So does th is this consistent with 11 to 13 billion years old? Uh, because the oldest stars that we see, they're somewhere around 11 to 13 billion years old. We see them in globular clusters. So if this is a 10% um, range from ages, uh, or if our uncertainty on this Hubble constant is 10%, that should translate to 10% uh, uncertainty in ages. So I can't just divide out kilometers and megaparsecs. That is going to not give me any kind of real number. One kilometer is much smaller than a million parsecs. Um, so I have a number that I can use um, one megaparsec is the same as 3 times 10 to the 19 kilometers. Um, so we'll use this and try to turn the Hubble constant into something else that makes a little sense. I'm going to start here. We have h naught equals 70 kilometers per second divided by 3.1 times 10 to the 19 um, kilometers because that's replacing the megaparsec. So what's going to happen here is the kilometers cancel out and I get 70 over 3.1 times 1 over 10 to the 19. I'm just stretching all of this out uh, times 1 or the unit is 1 over seconds. Maybe I'll write seconds so that doesn't look like a 5. Because uh, the kilometers cancel out, cancel it out, but the seconds is on the downstairs or the upstairs, so it's going to be on the, the downstairs of the final unit. Um, but the age of the universe is going to be one over the Hubble constant. So let's just flip everything. I can say 3.1 over 70 times 10 to the 19th, and then this final unit will be in seconds. I can use the magic of Microsoft OneNote to tell me what 3.1 over 70 equals. And that is 0 0.0443, which I can say this is 0 0.0443 times 10 to the 19th seconds. Or I can move my decimal two places. So this is 4.4. .4. I don't really have anything more than two significant digits anyway, so I'm just going to neglect that three. Uh, times 10 to the 17, because I've dropped uh, two powers of 10. So where I'm going now is I can take the 3.515 times 10 to the 16 seconds in a billion years and divide this out uh, to turn this seconds into, um, into years. So I have 4.4 times 10 to the 17. Let me bring this up so that's more uh, in our attention. Uh, divided by 3.15, let's just turn this into 3.2, 
times 10 to the 16. The units up here are seconds. The units down here are seconds per ger, no, giga year, 1 billion years. So seconds cancel out. And what I'm left with, notice 10 to the 16 divided out from 10 to the 17 is just 10. So I get 4.4 over 3.2. And this whole thing is times 10, and this will be in giga years. Let's use one note to give me more of an exact number, 4.4 divided by 3.2 equals 1.375. I'm just going to round that and uh, say this is about 14. Um, actually, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. This is going to be about 1.4. So what we have is 1.4. 4 times 10 giga years, and this is where I was jumping to 14, just get rid of that 10 and say 14 giga years. So this is where we have an estimate of about 14 billion years for the age of the universe. Um, this is within the 10% the if we're going from 11 to 13 billion as the estimate for all the stars. There is some controversy now about the age of the universe and how we estimate the Hubble constant. But that's actually going to have to wait till a later time. But this is, again, this process, this dimensional analysis is what I want you to understand, how to go from the Hubble constant and the typical units we look at into this value of seconds and then billions of years. And that's how we're going to get the age of the universe from the data that we have. So let's look at the data that, that we have. So exercise 19 is putting all this stuff together. Can we graph redshift on the x and distance on the y-axis and set a straight line to the points. So I have the data all prepped here in exercise 19. I got and I pulled up the data from exercises 1 to 4. Um, and I so what I basically did was I copied this spreadsheet, put it here. Um, I also have another galaxy listed here. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to get to that in a in a second. Um, I did, I'm going to work first, I'm going to work in the R. Um, we can look at apparent size and I data later, but I'm just going to do this first graph just in the R. And so exercise 19, what it is asking you to do is just take the galaxies, the good ones from exercises 1 to 4. We know the 5 and 6 exercises were, were selected to be bad data. Um, and let's make... Um, a Hubble diagram. And so what I can do here, this relative distance, and it's scaled up here, so I can just copy this, and I could paste it right down here. And this is the same thing. This is relative flux distance. And these are all scaled up with this one. Notice how these ones seem a lot closer than these, we'll look at the magnitudes here and the magnitudes here. These are smaller magnitude numbers, meaning they're probably closer. And so we will go to um, insert. I've kind of blocked this part of my screen off, but we're going to insert um, a chart. And actually, I should select my data first. Um, actually, no, I'm, I'm not going to select my data first. I'm just going to insert a scatter chart because I want to show you um, how to formally select data. This is selecting just this data right here. That's, that's not what I want. So what we have to do is we need to double click or excuse me, not double click. We need to, if you're on a PC, right click, or if you're on a Mac, control click, and you press select data. And we're just going to remove all of these data sets. And so I'm going to add a new data set. My X values, we have to, we get a window here that says edit series. Um, what will I call this? Um, I'm just going to call this R um, magnitude because this is coming from, the distance estimates are coming from the R magnitude. And I want to select the range of the X values. So the X values are going to come from the redshifts, actually. So these are over here. And then I'm going to keep, I'm going to press Control and select another set, keeping these in order. So those are my X values, collectively, these two chunks of redshift data. 
going to go back and I'm going to select my y values, which are my relative flux distances. And I'll go back and I'm going to press OK. And I have this relationship here. Uh, I can press OK to go back to the chart. And now I have this nice, tidy, uh, looks kind of like a, a linear relationship. But let, let's see, we need to fit a trend line to this. Um, on the vertical is relative distance. On the horizontal is um, redshift. I'm going to move the legend over here. So you can move stuff around. And I'm going to change the title. I'm actually going to not even have a title for this. But what I do want to add, so we can go to add chart element, is I want axes title. So primary horizontal, I'm going to call this, oops, I started typing somewhere else that I didn't want to type in. Um, I have to double click on this new axis title that I've added. And I can call this redshift. And I can move this around. I can make my chart. I can start sizing stuff so that it gets easier to, to read. Um, and then I want to add another one. I want the primary vertical. And so I click on it. I'm going to call this relative distance. And what I want to do is I want to shift this so I'm not covering up anything. Again, format it so it's easy to read. And then the last thing is the chart element I will add is I'm going to add a trend line. And this is a linear trend line. And I also want to look at the options of this trend line. So when I click on it, it comes up on the side here, my trend line options. And so the last one are the more statistical trend line options. I'm going to force something. I'm going to set the intercept at zero. And that's because we're assuming if the redshift is zero, that the relative distance should be zero on this intergalactic scale. I want to display the equation on the chart. And oh, I lost my trend line options window. And I also want to display the R squared value. So the R squared is not the nice 0.99 that we had seen before, but it's, it's still um, closer to one than to zero. So we have maybe a correlation, maybe a linear correlation. This needs further study, uh, meaning we should probably get a lot of galaxies. So this is the graph that exercise 19 would like you to present. Um, and you can do that for just one of them. But you can also, maybe you wanted to compare how does the apparent size um, work with this. So what I can do is I can click back on the chart, control click if you're Mac, right click if PC, and you can say select data. And I can just add a new series. I'm going to call this series name apparent size. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick my x values. Those are here and here. So I have to use the version to select again. That lets me select multiple sections. I'm going to pick the y values. But now I'm going to use my relative size distance. Oops, I didn't actually put the relative size distance in here. That's OK. Let me just finish up with a chart. And I can add those later. So I'm going to press OK. So I have a bunch of zeros here. But what I'm going to do is I'll just copy this set of cells and then paste this in. Now the chart filled everything else in. Again, this is what's super beautiful about Excel. And so this, I want to make sure my trend lines and the equations are all matched up. You can even change font colors. So I should probably change the color of this font, the label options. Um, I think is actually if I just change it right here, that the font color should be blue. There we go. Yeah. And so now I know that this equation goes with the, the blue data. Um, I'm going to add another trend line. So I'll be on my chart and I go back to the chart design menu and go to add chart element, Le uh, not legend, uh, trend line. And I want linear. And this is going to be the apparent size. And so the trend line options, I have to make sure I select the trend line. And notice 
I want to still set that intercept equal to zero, display the equation, display the R squared value. It put it down there, but let's change the color of this guy. So I go back to the home menu, um, make sure I'm selected there and let's set the color as red. So the R squared for apparent size is clearly not as good as the R squared for, um, for the, the magnitude or the brightness based distance. So I, I tend to go, we're going to go with brightnesses as getting a real, uh, a real information for this. Um, the last thing I would like to do with this data is we're going to make a separate graph. And this is where we can insert some columns, um, meaning I'm going to put in a new column here just to give a little buffer between it and the other columns. I'm going to call this velocity. And so velocity is going to be equal to my redshift times 300,000. And this is a, this is the kilometers per second of how fast the galaxy is moving away from us or how fast space is stretching in between us and the galaxy. I can paste that down there. I can paste that down here so I can get the actual velocity. And then the last thing uh, that I need to calculate is what is the actual distance in megaparsecs? This is where we have a known galaxy. So there is a place to go to. And it wasn't, it's not linked here anymore, but I do have the link. Um, it is posted in the documentation uh, for day 18 for class and will be posted in the comment for this video. Um, I go to this link called Famous Places. I want to go to Famous Galaxy Places. And the galaxy we're going to use is this galaxy called NGC 450. Because this galaxy um, is, we know the distance to it a bunch of different ways. So SDSS, we have this information for, we got magnitudes. Uh, we also can get, of course, things like petroradius. Um, but we also can, can get a redshift. And the redshift, again, correlating a magnitude with a redshift, the most important. Remember, get the redshift that's listed above the spectrum. And then the other thing we we'll want to get from this, and this is where we put this other link called NED. And this is stands for the NASA IPAC Extragalactic Database. And so I click on that, and the, the website is still opening. But what's going to happen is I will have a search result. NGC 450 is the first one. And it brings me to its home, and then I have redshift independent dis distances. I need to figure out a known galaxy where its distance was found not through a redshift Hubble curve method or Hubble diagram method, but some other way. So there are 24 individual distance methods uh, for this. Um, I'm curious to see what they are. How were these? These were done with something, ah, this is a, you can look at this if you want later. This is called the tolly fisher relationship for galaxy measurements. But what we have is a megaparsec distance. I'll let you look up tolly fisher This isn't ideal. If we had like a CFID or a supernova in this galaxy, that would be the most ideal, but this will work. Um, and so I'm going to take this megaparsec distance, note it's 17.613. And that's going to go, I have it already right here, the known distance in megaparsecs. And so let's go back to my sheet. This known distance um, I want to use to, I'm going to insert one more column here, and this is going to be distance in megaparsecs. It's good practice to also label units when you have them. So if I have velocity, I'll just call this V and I'll call this kilometers per second. So I know that that's what I'm looking at. And so this distance in megaparsecs, but what I need to do is I got to rescale all of these 
to this one. I got to call this galaxy my known reference. And so what I'll do, I don't want to change these. So I'm going to add one more column. So I'm going to call this relative um, NGC 450 distance. That should make sense. And so what this will be, this equals this divided by C dollar sign 12. And then I'm going to paste that all the way through here. It tells me how far away those galaxies are relative to NGC 450 and tells me how far those are relative to NGC 450. And then the last thing I will do is the actual distance equals the value here times, I mean, we can put another, I'm going to use this cell reference and then I'm going to anchor it using my dollar sign trick so I can always change it later. And then I'm going to paste that here and paste this here. And then after this, I make a new graph. And so this new graph, go back to insert, I'm going to go to a chart, scatter plot, has no idea what to insert because it's just a single cell. So I have to right click or control click on it and select my data. And I'm going to add a data series. I'm still going to call this R magnitude because I'm using a brightness distance measurement. I'm going to select my X values. This time, let's make this more like the actual Hubble diagram. So I'm going to select all of these. Um, the chart will ignore all of the blank cells, and that's OK. Um, and I'm going to enter that as my x value. I'm going to also select my y values as velocity. Oops, notice how I missed one in here, but I can add that later, which is totally fine. We're going to have one that's kind of off. And then I'm going to press OK and OK. And now I have this chart. Let's make sure that we can paste this in and we see another data point pop up there. And so the vertical of this is actually megaparsecs and the horizontal is kilometers per second. So what I'll do now is, of course, I want to make sure I change the axes or label the axes, not change them. So let's go to chart design again. And let's go to axes titles, primary horizontal. I'm going to call this again V in kilometers per second. And I'm going to call, I'm going to add the title for the primary vertical. And this is D in megaparsecs. And then I'm going to delete the title. Um, we can title stuff later. And then last thing I'm going to add is a trend line. And we'll see how linear this is. Now remember, I want to make sure that the trend line, if I control click on it, format trend line, um, must have, oh, there it is. Set the intercept equal to zero, display the equation, display R squared value. And then I'm going to go back. So this is my estimate of the Hubble constant, 330 uh, kilometers per second per megaparsec. It's only a power of 10 off from what we accept it to be now, and it is less than Hubble's original 500. And that's, I don't feel so bad for just collecting only 12 galaxies plus one known place where the distance measurement is actually not necessarily the best redshift independent distance measurement, but it's a starting point. Um, so exercise 19, you are putting together a graph like this. For the entire project, um, to summarize everything beyond exercise 19, I want you to do this graph, but I want you to get 10 more galaxies 
from anywhere in the Sloan Sky Survey and add them to this. So you have my template, the link to this whole spreadsheet is in the comments or in the, the description of this video. Um, this is actually all formatted for you to use if you want to use it and you can just add more rows of data. Um, but you'll find that sometimes adding rows and manipulating a sheet is going to take longer than just building a sheet yourself. Um, this would be an underestimate of the age of the universe because we think the universe is moving, expanding faster than it actually is. Um, but our last unit will describe uh, what the actual expansion rate is, what we think it is, and how we're confused by it. So this concludes um, the entire uh, Hubble um, diagram project. And this is the final Hubble diagram in the units that Hubble had originally uh, used. So go back here uh, to the final project page. They give you a little search window to look at some galaxies and to see if you can find your own. But you can just start clicking around elsewhere uh, from the other windows and add more uh, just that were close by. Um, or pick a, pick a patch of sky and start from scratch there. So that's the, the whole project. Hopefully you will get a chart that looks like this. And I'm curious to see what people get for the Hubble constant.